Welcome, everyone, to another, if it's a Wednesday afternoon, it must be party line day, right? So um, today, I'm very excited to have a return visitor, and um, I will say that Wendy Bernard is responsible for a lot of the stuff I knit between um, the custom knits, custom knits two, custom knits accessories, which if you do not have those in your library, you need to buy them immediately, which with those and now her two incredible stitch dictionaries, um, you pretty much are set to create any kind of garment that you would ever want to knit. So welcome back, Wendy. I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you about your new stitch dictionary. Well, thank you, Beth. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, and you know, you were here to talk about the Up, Down, All Around Stitch Dictionary, which was kind of the prequel um, to this book. And I remember the time when I got my copy, which I turned around and bought a second copy to put so I could have one at each of my houses. It's kind of, it's a go-to for me, is that when I saw the first one, I thought, oh, my God, somebody finally did all the work for, you know, for doing the stitch dictionary that gives you the conversion already written up for you or charted up for you for doing it from the top down, which for people who knit their socks from the cuff is extraordinarily helpful. And people who are knitting something in the round where all the stitch dictionaries, I think, ever, oops, ever, okay. ever written were um, written for doing a, um, like, back and forth. They're always back and forth. So the, um, you know, I, I know how to do it. <laughs> I hate to do it to con to convert them over, especially in fancier stitches or lace stitches. And I, when I saw that first one, I thought, "Oh, thank God, somebody did all that work for me." And I and I think that was really kind of the you know deep breath response that so many knitters had, and that book was so wildly popular um, for that reason. And I know like Kate is already saying she has the first one and she can't wait to see this one. And I think this will be, uh, this will be joining its, uh, younger sister on the, I guess, older sister on the, on, on knitters bookshelves everywhere. So I was hoping then you were going to do a follow-up. So on behalf of knitters everywhere, thank you, Wendy. Oh, you're welcome. It was a lot of work. Um, I know most people can convert the stitch patterns. It's that there is some trial and error involved. So even if you're pretty experienced, you have to chart it, you have to think about it, you have to swatch it and maybe re-swatch it, maybe re-swatch it to get it right. Uh, so, you know, I'm kind of the designer who really likes to do things in the round and top down, something that's seamless. And um, a while back it occurred to me as I was sort of converting all these stitch patterns for my own designs that there must be other knitters that would appreciate something like this. And with the first volume, a lot of people took a look at it and thought, well, it's just another stitch dictionary. It's very pretty. This one's in color because most of the ones that we do have, at least the really the standbys, the Barbara Walker treasuries, which are so great, they're in black and white. They're not super easy to see all the stitch patterns in detail, and they're not charted. So most people didn't really realize the concept of the very first book, and they would they bought it um, probably because it was pretty and you know lots of pictures and also charted and written out. But then that light bulb goes off, and people realize, wait, there's so much more. I mean, there are 150 stitch patterns. It's not a ton of stitch patterns when you think about it, because the treasury books have way more. But the thing is, is that you've got this added value of each stitch pattern might have up to four iterations. So you can almost multiply those 150 by four. And you can have, let's say, a seamless garment um, where you knit the body in one direction and you knit the sleeves in the other direction. Well, what happens if your cables are directional? With, the, with both of these books, you can select virtually any stitch pattern and be able to match the way the stitch patterns appear in each element of your sweater. So it's really cool. Yeah, that I mean, that's really amazing. I know this a sweater I'm working on now for my son, the body is knit from the from the hem up. And then this, this, but the sleeves are picked up 
along mm-hmm. the um, the armhole and knit down. I mean, and so this can really, um, you know, if if you're trying to do this yourself and you're not knitting from somebody else's pattern who's worked that out for you, it can be a real pain in the butt. <laughs> so, yeah. So to make them to make them look the same, and I think the other thing too is, you know, is if you're knitting, if you're knit, and especially because there's so many sock knitters, if you're knitting socks from the cuff down, the, which I think is the, probably the most traditional way to knit a sock, is that almost anything that you look at in a stitch pattern book is going to look completely different then because they're all written for bottom up. I mean, that's, that's just how they're written. It's, I mean, traditional row one, row two, row three, row four, row four. Well, so. you're not okay that you say rows, you notice how you're saying rows. Well, when you knit uh, socks, you're knitting in rounds. So uh-huh. if you're using a traditional book, you have to convert it unless you own the sock books that have them already presented in the round. So at least with this, you can pretty much select any pattern and it will already be in the round for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just not only a time saver, but a mistake saver. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, I think that's the worst. You know, it's like you get into the project and you think, oh, crap, that doesn't work. And then, you know, it, it's, it's, very, it's very disconcerting to have to, like, rip out and start over. I think that's why there are so many unfinished objects around, right? People start and it's like, oh, the, this isn't working Oops. and then it just goes in the bottom of the knitting bag which is really not fair to the project it's not its fault so oh. but yeah so and Kate says she wouldn't even know where to start converting and that she just loves us because the book does all the work for her which actually oh, so, does. Yeah. so yeah that's great yeah so thanks Wendy so I think oh. we're gonna um we're gonna take a take a peek at this new volume and um, we'll get a little uh, preview of what people can expect to find among the 150 um, patterns that have been worked out in a multitude of directions and ways. <laughs> so, which, because there are a multitude of directions and ways we knit, which, you know, it just makes sense. It makes, it makes complete sense. I, you know, and it's, it's one of those ideas where you think, geez, why didn't anybody else do this? Probably because it's just so freaking much work, but you know, <laughs> maybe that was it. It's just, it's so much easier to do a swatch where you're just knitting back and forth for, you know, 20, 30, yeah. 40 rows for the repeat. But yeah, this is, I mean, this is all, this is, it's, this a, it's is a total me. brain t- uh, twister too. I mean, my, after working, I, I only, when I was writing the book, I could only do a, a stitch pattern a day, maybe, because it, my brain would begin to hurt. It was really hard. Yeah, and, and we think ma- we think doing the math is bad, you know. <laughs> when you're doing math and a pattern and direction and reversing things, yeah, I mean, that's like, that's definitely a brain teaser. So, so thank you very much. And Kate says, yeah, she loves how it's not just a stitch dictionary, but there are patterns to show it off. And I'll show you that some of the patterns, because the patterns themselves are not kind of afterthoughts. They're, I mean, they're really beautiful. Thank you. I mean, honestly, I would have bought this book for the patterns. So, (laughs) you know, oh, I shouldn't say that because I would kind of like you to do a third, you know, like a sequel to this one. And this could be like the second in a, series it right. once your brain recovers from doing well well the the three is a magic number I think so I've already opened up a discussion with the publisher but we have to wait and see so we're, we're just talking at this point you know three three is a great number you know the Star know. Wars trilogy the Twilight trilogy the Divergent trilogy I mean I think the trilogy thing is it's kind of it's, it's kind powerful. of powerful yeah <laughs> it's a thing now so all right so First, I'm going to um, start out because you you talk about reversible stitches, which there are um, a bunch of stitch patterns in this book um, mm-hmm. that you list as reversible. And, you know, for especially if you're doing like a fold over collar or you're doing a, a scarf, you know, there's so many stitches that just have a really, you know, ugly backside. And that I just heard that when I said it. Um, but the is that um, you know so that you either feel like you have to like knit it in the round and double thick 
So mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, Kate. So and double thick, so that you never look at anything but the right side of the knitting. But you've actually um, uh, marked out the ones in the book where you can the 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 reverse side is not okay. unattractive <laughs> on yeah. its own. There, that's a better way to put it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so although they're not ident not identical, right? No, well, if it's truly reversible, like garter stitch, think about that. That is truly reversible because the knits and pearls are aligned exactly the same on both sides, even though your your pearl ridge will be jogged, obviously, but it looks exactly the same. Um, the one that we're looking at on the screen here, what do you guys think? Do you think that this is truly reversible or not? I would say it's not. It looks really close. So yeah. there's a big difference. We, we will label them in the book as truly reversible or looks good on both sides and so on. So yeah, it, it's really helpful. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, and actually Roxy said reversible stitches for collars and, you know, mm -hmm. other new areas and I, you know, where you don't want to have to like bind off and pick up and, you know, basically Hide start it. over because that then gives you two more ends to weave in. Yeah. But every time you do that and we know we're all adverse to weaving in our ends so and don't always do it as you go because I have learned the hard way to because I think oh I'm just going to weave in as I go and then yeah. there'll be so much less to do at the end and then sometimes I make a huge mistake and then ripping out is a nightmare yeah so, not yeah. not so much fun and if it's something that's going to be really stretchy once you block it you're going to be really sorry yeah. so because you're gonna, it's gonna be all puckery. It's not gonna be good. So, yeah, you gotta wait till the end and tough it out. So, <laughs> yuck ends. I agree. We, it's the bane of all of our knitting existence. You know, unless you're knitting off of a cone with 1,500 yards in it. So, it's just the way it goes. We'll live with it. Mm -hmm. All right. So now this is the the book is divided into sections for different kinds of stitches. And so, and I showed a couple of examples where you showed like the front and back of the um, the stitches where it may not be identical, but it's certainly lovely. On both and, sides, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it wouldn't offend me if I could see the back of that. So, and in fact, you know, like on the on the one that's closest to the large picture, I look at that back and I think, oh, I would knit that as a front. I mean, they're... Mm -hmm. They're both attractive. So tell us about this section of the book. Well, that would be Knits and Pearls. And another thing to mention is that each section has a range of colors. So you can identify it. Not, in this case, the Knits and Pearls are blues. They're gorgeous blues. Uh, this is all uh, Blue Sky Alpaca's yarn. I use them because they have such a broad range of colors. So I can have this blue chapter knits and pearls in a selection of blues that look good to, together. So you can see that one diamond shape pattern that you were talking about, Beth. Yeah, it looks good on both sides, but that's not truly reversible, is it? But it looks really good. And then the one in the upper right-hand corner, we call that the crenellated pattern. It's actually originally by, I believe, uh, Barbara Walker. And it almost looks exactly the same, but if you were to really inspect it, it's not. But these are both good ideas for scarves and items where you could see both sides. Yeah, and what a difference between doing a scarf like this and doing a garter stitch scarf. Oh, yeah. Right? So yeah. with just the addition, you know, you're doing knit and pearl and not just um, knit stitches. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they're just, yeah, and also Patty says they're fab it's fabulous for placemats, which, oh, yeah, oh, yeah absolutely, because you're going to get twice the wear because you flip it over. Mm -hmm. and, and you could do them in a nice cotton, and the cotton will show off the stitches really well. It's washable. Yeah. What a great idea. Yeah. I mean, and you think like washcloths or all kinds of things that knitters make, especially gift items mm -hmm. that where, you know, if the front and the back, and for me, the same thing for Afghans, if you're knitting blankets or baby, yes, yeah, Susan says baby blankets mm -hmm. where, you know, the, you're not going to always have it. So just the pretty side shows. So it's nice to have it where, even when it's flipped over, it's going to look really pretty. That's and 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 impressive when you give it as a gift. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So and and the stitches are done from whether top down or bottom up, um, or in the round. And I think all of the stitches are done both back and forth and in the round. 
Yes, and, and there are a couple. There's, you know what? It's it's sort of impossible to convert every single stitch pattern out there. I mean, there are literally thousands of stitch patterns that we have in the universe, and there sometimes I've come across one that I really wanted to have in the book and truthfully you just not everyone you can make it work but and there's only a couple cases in this book where you can't make it look exact but it looks close and I point it out so you know there there's always going to be an option to choose to knit it or not in that direction but like I said not every single thing is fully convertible and sometimes I got stuck and I wasn't able to make it work but for the most part everyone is knit in every direction yeah, that's amazing. And I can understand why you could only do one a day because that's crazy. Oh. <laughs> it hurts my head just to think about it. Well, I have so, to chart and, everything as I go. So I'm f physically charting it and then writing it out. And then my tech editor, who's wonderful, her name is Sue McCain. She's amazing. She's been with me with every book. She then goes through and recharts it. And then we double check it. And then I knit it. And sometimes I re knit it. And it's just a lot of work and brain power. But it's so rewarding when the book finally comes out look at how beautiful it is and it makes me so happy to talk to other knitters who find it to be helpful so it just it's totally worth it yeah and my theory is as long as you have one book on one knitter shelf somewhere in the world you get to live forever which is <laughs> That's true. you know it's a pretty cool thing right so yes it's very true yeah it's very cool so yeah susan said this is a wonderful accomplishment which i agree oh, and i'm glad you, you did it oh. <laughs> And then um, this is a pattern that shows shows off um, or a design, a project that shows off uh, one of the knit and pearl designs. And I just, I love the sweater. I love yoke sweaters. I love sweaters with trim at the bottom. I love bell sleeve sweaters. So this is, this is kind of, this is my thing. I just, I love this sweater. So tell us mm -hmm. about this design. Well, it is top down. And it does, it appears to be yoked, but it's actually kind of a cowl. Mm -hmm. But the way the cowl is constructed, it has that yoke, it sort of lays in a circular fashion. Um, and also with the raglan uh, shaping there, you can see it along the edges of the sleeves. It sort of adds to that yoke look. The sleeves are three quarter. You could always lengthen them since you're knitting top down. Let's say if you love that bracelet kind of length. You yeah. could always just try on as you go and then extend it by a couple inches to have the longer length. Um, the same goes for the length of the, the sweater. If you like it to be more uh, tunic style, you of course would have to buy a little extra yarn. And then you could um, knit it to whatever length that you like. And I think that this is a wonderful color choice. It's, it's made in um, Blue Sky Alpaca's Extra, which is kind of a bulky weight. Yet, you know, she's a beautiful model, so anything would look good on her. But I honestly think that it's pretty flattering look um, for most people's body shapes. Yeah, and, it's, and I love the bracelet length sleeves because mm -hmm. I like bracelets. And there's something about, I think, exposing your wrist. It's one of the, like, more, it's more, it's just a feminine part of the body. It's like collarbones for me is like exposed mm -hmm. collarbones and wrists. It's just something very um, feminine and elegant about that. So that's like, that's one of my favorite things. So Roxy says it's a wonderful design. <laughs> And she thinks how fun. Um, <laughs> and then I, I, I grew up in Florida. I grew up like not wearing clothes for most of my life. So, but I appreciate that, Roxy. And uh, Kate, <laughs> Kate loves this. So, um, which you know, how how could you not? And this the stitch pattern and the texture on it is just really really lovely. So, very pretty. All right, so this is and the it's next. Easy, it's easy. I would say back to that blue sweater. It's um, I would label that as a beginner, practically a beginner style. Oh my gosh, really? Mm -hmm. It's only knits and pearls, and if you can go knitting around and follow a simple chart or, or written instructions, it is super basic. And I don't know if I would call that a first sweater, but it definitely in, in that realm. Wow. And it's knit in a bulky weight yarn, so it's going to be mm -hmm. a relatively quick knit as well. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I, I think I'm putting this on my to-do list for myself. <laughs> it's not going to be a gift for myself. So very pretty. So tell us about this next section of the book, the pink. Well, yeah, the pink. Uh, you can see that there are ribs here. The first – this is a little trickier because the first book, you know, it's pretty obvious that you can have your – you know, two by two rib, your one by one rib, 
certain, you know, mock rib, cable rib, these different ribs, and it was pretty easy to make the selections for the first book, but then with the second book you start running out of rib patterns because rib patterns obviously are not as well, we don't have thousands of them like we have lace patterns, right? right. So, um, you know, although in the second book I did repeat one or two because I wanted this, I didn't want to be greedy. I didn't want it to have to be a standalone book. I thought that, or no, I wanted it to be a standalone book in case somebody didn't want to buy the first one. So there might be one or two that are, you know, are repeated, like a one by one rib and a two by two rib just for people who might not own the first book, but other than that, everything is unique. And this one right here, the, the one on the right-hand side that has that almost like a fleur-de-lis or a, kind of a floral section in there, it's actually a pretty simple rib pattern. Um, you can find this, I believe, this same stitch pattern is used on the pattern that we're going to look at next, which is a wrap. Um, but they're all in pinks, and um, the, the ribs are actually a lot of fun to knit in all directions and I just uh, you know love ribs they're, they're great for using uh, for scarves or ribbing obviously ribbing where you would need a cuff um, but you can work an all over rib pattern um, because some of these aren't that stretchy some of them just don't have a lot of stretch so you can play around a, you know, a bit and then even decide on making a scarf out of a rib pattern and it'll look good on both sides in most cases yeah these are really pretty and um uh... And that little lacy rib is, it's just, it's very, it's just a special little design. So let's see where you used this. And I love this. This is such a clever use of, you know, basically rectangle, a big rectangle, oh, rectangle to create yeah. a very um, polished look. This is so pretty. Tell us about this design. Yeah, Patty says, how pretty. It's, exactly it's really pretty. It's going to be easy to wear because um, you can't see the back in this picture, but the back wraps around and there are buttons down at the base of her back that hold it together. So it has a very kind of, uh, it's very uh, minimalist um, and it'll fit a lot of different body shapes. You don't have to wear it this way if you don't want to. You could loop it around your neck a bunch of times and then button it for a, like a cowl. Um, it's just one of those pieces that is a no-brainer after a while because it, it is pretty repetitive, but this is also a bulky weight yarn. This is also the Blue Sky Alpacas Extra, and it does go pretty fast, and it's nice and smooshy. It's one of those smooshy yarns, and it really takes on that rib um, really well and that the little flowers really kind of pop out. It's really sweet. Yeah, and I like this that it's, you know, one of those things that you throw on, you could throw this on over a little black dress or over jeans and a t-shirt like the model does and really it's going to depend on the color that you knit it in as to what it's going to look like. But I also like that how it comes down and it kind of sits a little lower on her hip because Usually when you see the wraps that come around in the back, you know, they're like right, right. underneath the bust. And yeah. usually the tummy area is not the one that most people want to highlight. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I mean, most, most, especially in America, most of us are a little fluffier and, uh, that, you know, but this is just a really um, flattering cut. Kate says, Oh, which I, <laughs> I said, and uh, Patty says the stitch would make a lovely feminine baby blanket or throw. Oh, it would. Great. And the other, yeah, and the other thing is, is if you wanted to, you could take a look at other rib patterns in the book and become your own designer and just swap out a favorite rib pattern and basically follow the instructions for this, but use your substituted rib pattern. So you can, you know, basically do it on your own and make your own design. Yes, we should not. We are we are not restricted to the one that Wendy chose, even though it's lovely. And I think that's one of the great things about um, all of your books is it really does encourage people to to make designs their own, to swap things out, to you know pick a yarn with a different gauge, or you know. So it's really, um, it. I mean, it it really encourages people to to use their imagination and their creativity, which is a good thing for all of us. So, but this is, this is just, this is really sharp and it's very cute in the back where it buttons as well. So, which, you know, I probably should have put a picture in there, but I didn't. So, um, 
All right, so this next section, the greens, what is this section for? Fancy. As you can see, um, we have, well, we, we looked at the front and back of this. I think it's, it's not Indian pillar, but I'm trying to remember the name. But anyways, the front and back, we already looked at that. But this is a fancy chapter. You can see in the lower left-hand corner, we have that crazy loop stitch that a lot of us struggle with. Um, but it, if you use really nice yarn, it comes out, you know, you could make uh, puppets with it and have lion hair or sheep hair or whatever. And then in the very bottom there, you have a bit of the Indian cross stitch, which is a fully re reversible pattern. And then we have, like, it looks like a bobble, but it's actually a wrap stitch. So this chapter is what I call fancy stitches. These are, these are stitches that, you know, might have um, dip stitches where you go in the row below. They're just things that don't really naturally fit into, let's say, an, an pearl or a lace chapter. There just might be some extra maneuver in making that particular stitch pattern. Yeah. Well, and then you did a little um, mitt pattern here, which, you know, it's kind of interesting. I Because I've knit mitts from the top down and the bottom up. I never really thought about, because usually I've done them in Fair Isle, so I've never really thought about the fact that it's going to switch the design if you did like a lace or something, but obviously it does. This is another one of those garments where I've the patterns are written both ways, up and down. So this is this is a, a lovely soft what yarn in what yarn did you use on this? This is really pretty. It is pretty. It's another blue sky alpacas yarn. It is um, their sport weight. That's all it is, and it comes in a million trillion colors. It's really a great uh, work horse yarn. It's good yardage. Uh, it just it's just a really nice yarn. Yeah, it looks like it has a beautiful um, like very slight halo to it when it photographs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely. All right, so and then we have our next section, the gray section. And I pulled this one from on the upper right-hand side there, you know, because I think when people think cables, you know, there's some technique to do a reversible cable using a rib in the cable and like seed stitch outside the cable, which you really have to keep track of what you're doing because you're crossing cables on both sides. And it's a little crazy. But this, this is, um, this actually... This kind of loose uh, cable is so modern, and it does look good on both sides. It's really pretty. So tell us about the whole idea behind um, having to write uh, cables for going up and down. Well, this is the lucky thing for me. Um, most cable patterns uh, look almost the same going upwards and downwards except for where you have a right left when you turn it upside down it becomes um, an, I mean a right cross when you turn it upside down it just becomes a left cross so that part of the job is actually not too bad the harder part is um, when you have some other elements that become a part of the cable like in the one kind of, it's on the left hand side, but see the one that looks like um, two big intertwined cables? That one's yeah. just a little bit trickier because there's more going on. Um, but cables are not as hard to convert as you would think. Lace is much tougher. The one on the right hand side that you said was really modern, there's a funny story about this because when I, I knit it from a Japanese book and Japanese books are only charted they're not written out and even if they were written out I mean I do understand some Japanese as I studied it in college but it's still knitting terms and they're you know they're not like hello you know goodbye you know, nice to <laughs> Where is the library? So little, yeah so um, what happened is that I finished this cable and they photographed it and then the tech editor came back and she said Wendy what side is the right side and I said, well, this side is the right side. She goes, no, no, this side's the right side. And it took us like a week of going back and forth, and I had to re-knit it a bunch of times because we couldn't figure out which side was the right side. Oh, how funny. Yes. I mean, so, both sides are beautiful. Well, the one that you would think is the back side is the front, right? The puffy side is actually the front. Yeah, when I first looked at it, I thought uh, the smooth side, I, I would have assumed was the right side of the cable. And, 
and I was betting on it. I knit it. I converted it. My tech editor so no, said, no, no, you're wrong. And it was just the one thing that was holding the book up from printing, I believe. We were just, uh, by then our, our brains had just, you know, fizzled up and dried up. But <laughs> but I love that. It's actually easier than it looks to do. It's just a stack of some crosses over some um, garter stitch. Wow. That's all it is. Yeah, Roxy says she loves that Japanese cable, and she can think of so many uses, and Deb wants a sweater in it. Well, I'll tell really... you, it's not stretchy. It's not a stretchy cable, so if people wanted to swatch with it and figure it out, I can totally see it in kind of a modern, minimalistic kind of hat, Or, mm -hmm. but you'd have to add some sort of edging because it'll just be kind of floppy. In a sweater, is perfect, you know, especially if you kind of play around with a different type of yarns. And a scarf, amazing. If you choose like a really drapey yarn, you've got a lot of options with this. Yeah, and I think if you had a, if you did it in a garment, something that's like really architecturally, mm -hmm. you know, shaped, this would be just gorgeous in it. Really, yeah. really, really pretty. So yeah, I want a sweater in that too, Deb. I agree with you. <laughs> so, so, and maybe Deb will knit one for me. Um, so this is this. Beautiful hat is knit top is. down or bottom up. I got to remember. Um, you know what? I don't even know. I got to look. Hang on. <laughs> got to grab my copy. I believe it. I think it's bottom up because yes, it is bottom up. You know why? I could knit it top down, but because you have cables, sometimes if you're designing it on your own, people think about it this way. If you're designing on your own and you know you need a certain multiple of uh, stitches to incorporate your cables, it's much easier to get to know your cable intimately <laughs> so that by the time you get toward the top where you can shape, you have worked with it enough to know how to scale down your cables and have them kind of twist around each other or be become a swirl. Uh, be that's why I knit this one bottom up. If I had knit it top down, in order to increase my stitches as I worked it down and then be able to incorporate the cables into those increased stitches, it would have looked wonky or I would have had to re-knit it a bunch of times. So sometimes it really is a better idea to knit in one direction over another. So yes, it's knit bottom up. Yeah, so this will be less frustrating for the knitter. Well, <laughs> not for the knitter, for the designer because provide, <laughs> let's say so let's say I had figured out how to do it from the top down, which is my preferable, preferable way of working because then you, you have less of an instance where you might run out of yarn. It's just more practical for me. But I would have worked it out for the knitter, so it wouldn't have been frustrating for them, only for, for me, the designer. Well, there you go. Yeah, Kate says this is a cute hat, which I agree. Yeah, it's cute. It's, it's really and pretty. Just, she's cute, too. She's a beautiful model. Yeah, so. she is. Yeah, just adorable. All right, so now we're in the browns and tans, so it must be lace time. Yes. Now, this is a tricky one. This this one can be a tough nut to crack because most of the people who are listening have knit lace before, and many people understand that with lace patterns, there's a difference between just regular old lace and then knitted lace. And in one case, you have a resting row or a resting round where you either Curl all the stitches on the wrong side or knit all the stitches on the right side every other round or row. But a lot of the stitch patterns out there, especially the Japanese one that I really love, the Japanese ones many times have maneuvers that happen on the wrong side row. And so you have to reverse them so they look the same on that the, the side that shows. So lace can be super tricky and there are even some motifs, in particular leaves, that are very hard to make look the same going bottom up and top down. So this chapter is a cur like I would call it a curated chapter of stitch patterns that you could knit in all directions and in the round that I could find that would work well and that are um, different enough so that you know you have a broad array of lace patterns to choose from. Okay, I'm speaking says to the choir. Says you're <laughs> preaching to the choir. I think that's I think that's the thing you know that I I find the most difficult is when I'm doing a late. I mean, and obviously, if you're doing a lace pattern in the round where 
every other row is a resting row. That's really simple. You just convert the pearls to knits or knits to pearls. Correct. But when when there's the change where you're actually every row has some activity on it, mm-hmm. you know, trying to keep that straight when you're knitting in the round, even if you chart it out for yourself. Forget you know, about it's it. reversing everything and, you know, changing the pearl two together to the knit two together. And if you're doing like double center decreases and, you know, it's, it's, um, knitting through the black back loop, anybody knitting through yeah. the back loop. Oh. Yeah. It's <laughs> just really, um, it just becomes, it becomes less fun, um, yeah. Yeah. for the knitter. And as Patty said, lots of fails and, you know, you end up ripping things out, ripping out lace is never fun. And, you know, even with lifelines, yeah. So, um, on behalf of lace knitters everywhere, <laughs> thank you. This was, this was rough. I won't, I won't say that it was easy. It, it's yeah, rough. But if I do a third one, I really want to focus more on the really hard ones. You know, the, the ones that nobody would ever even try. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Or like, this is, yeah, and she says this may save our Roxy says this may save our balls of silk mohair that don't frog oh, well. I mean, and that's and that's the problem too. If you're ripping out lace, you know, you're ripping out such a fine yarn. And mm-hmm. if you're knitting, you know, with mohair type laces, they get stuck and they don't want to pull out, and then you end up throwing out whatever you just unknit because the yarn becomes unusable. And uh you know, and it's, it's tough, you know, unless you're knitting your lace with a worsted weight wool, the ripping out is not going to be pretty. So it never is. It never is. It's always hard to do, even if it's garter stitch, it's no fun. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Kate says this, this seems really hard to figure out. She can't imagine what would be in the third book, but I think you need to be really well rested when you start, if you start the third one, if you just do the more complicated <laughs> stitches, because, um, I mean, this, this is crazy enough. I just can't even imagine. And Patty asked frogging. Frogging is ripping out, Patty. Like, rip it, rip it, rip it. That's just why I came from calls frogging. So, yeah. And she's thanking you in advance for more lace and eyelet patterns. So, oh. yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I'm talking to the publisher. So, we'll find out pretty soon. Yeah, pressure's on now. So, <laughs> because <laughs> now we're all now we're all waiting for it so yeah and Roxy said she would buy a book on each type of design so this could be like a 12 volume set Wendy well maybe Roxy can come work for me <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could do it it'll kill me <laughs> oh lord so I have to ask are all these models are those real tattoos or have they been drawn on well okay this is funny they're probably real tattoos because the the photographer is up in the Bay Area in San Francisco and a lot of young people including I'm old but including my you know my tattoos are very common around here but um, what we did take out were nose rings oh lord the ladies had yeah they had facial jewelry and stuff so I I you know I said you know my audience is pretty hip but I think that let's let's get rid of the nose rings and I mean that's fine if they want a nose ring but I just wanted it to be you know open to all audiences and and plus it's not timeless. A tattoo I can live with, but t- nose rings might go out of style. And you want a book like this, you want it to be on the shelves for a long time because yeah. stitch pattern books are timeless. Yeah, it's like, you know, Barbara Walker's books are, what, yeah. 40 years old or maybe more than that, 50 years old now. Yeah. And they look yeah. they look like they're um, copied on a copy machine. They do. They do. And I, I would love to see those books redone in color and, you mm-hmm. know, where you can actually, they're organized by topic and, you know, that's the problem I have with them is you have to go through so many pages. And that's Mm -hmm. why what's really great about this is not only that it's a topic, but we'll talk later about the index to it. So, oh, and Patty says she knows what frogging is. She just can't imagine frogging silk mohair. It's not pretty, Patty. It won't happen. It doesn't happen. No, you end up, you end up tossing the yarn that you undid because it's, doesn't it, it doesn't handle the abuse yeah. too well so this is such a cute little uh, camisole top and I like that it's layered over um, something else for those of us who aren't quite that daring <laughs> so no, I, would, I wouldn't get away with it that's for sure 
And no, I think there are very few people that would um, that would be able to pull that off. But um, but this is really cute. Tell us about this design. Well, it is. Um, I'm trying to remember if it's top down or bottom up. It is bottom up, and it has uh, three different stitch patterns. Um, the bottom you can see is kind of a waved stitch pattern, and then the center portion is this uh, rosette. And then we have um, some, you know, a layer of, of eyelets, and then it comes up to the top, which is garter. It's all one piece, and knit in the round, and it's adjustable um, in terms of the straps. And if you didn't want to have such skinny straps, you can certainly go ahead and pick up stitches from each corner and work a garter stitch band that's thicker, you know, to wrap around to the back and then just connect it there. Yeah, really, really cute. So and then this is my my favorite. I am such a color work addict. I just uh, although the my son's sweater that I'm knitting now is all texture and no color, and I have to admit it's kind of nice not carrying any yarns. But these are these are all mosaic stitch patterns, right? Yep, they're mosaic, and I believe that it was Barbara Walker again. We mentioned her name. She's just this iconic person who gave so much to us knitters. And by the way, she's no longer in the business. She now studies something like rocks and geophysics. But you know, she basically just gave us so much to work from. And Barbara Walker came up with mosaics back, I think, in the 60s. In the book, I actually write about it. And these are essentially just um, two colors. You can, of course, work with more colors if you want. But they're basically two, color, two colors slip stitch patterns. Super easy to do. They look, they look difficult. But it's once you figure out how to work with two colors, and what you do is you cast on with a light color, and then you work um, one row, and then after that you you just you can work them in garter or you can work them in stockinette. And basically the principle is is you use one color at a time, and you look at the chart. And I also write these out for people who don't like charts, which is really cool for mosaics because typically mosaics are only charted. But I wrote them out for you as well. And so what you do is you take one color and you knit it, and then following the written instructions or the blocks, you slip the opposite color. And then you work back on the second row, doing the same thing, and then you just continue on, and it's super duper easy. I taught a quick class on it a couple weekends ago, and it was a 40-minute uh, class, and every single person in the class had it down and were well on their way to doing any mosaic they wanted. So these are great, and yes, they are each presented top down and bottom up, unless they're exactly the same in both directions and flat and in the round. Yeah, and you know, I think that's the thing about mosaic knitting is that you're only using one color in any row, so well, you're you're not carrying, you know, the yarn behind and worried about your floats and all of that. Um, good stuff. It does definitely change your row gauge. So for people who are going to substitute in because of those slip stitches, it definitely changes your row gauge, but not significantly your stitch it gauge. Compresses. Wow. It compresses. It does. It does compress a little bit. Yeah, it does. Um, but it's um, it's it's real. It's a really a lot of bang for the buck in terms yeah. of the end result without. I mean, it's crazy that it's it's actually quite simple, a quite simple technique to do. So yeah, and Patty says they are amazing. She's she's going to use uh, one for a table, a new table runner, which is a, a great use for that. It's um, and also it also it saves on yarn. Just imagine you're not carrying both colors along, so you're using half as much yarn because you're slipping stitches. You're not actually using that yarn in that row. So you're not going to have to use as much yarn when you're working a mosaic. Yeah, and then the risk too when you're carrying a yarn across the back is being so careful that you don't create a pucker mm -hmm. by leaving a short uh, your float too tight. I mean, there's so much that can go wrong in Fair Isle, and mosaic actually s solves most of those problems for you, which is which is nice. Yeah, and Roxy said, and the floats are so ugly, and that becomes a problem in terms of what the backside looks like. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the backside of mosaics is actually, you don't get that, it doesn't look like the it front. It doesn't, it's not, no, it doesn't, but it's not, there are no floats. Yeah. There are slip stitches. You catch your jewelry on or small children's fingers or, 
It's not unattractive, put it that way. Yeah. It's neat and tidy. The back is neat and tidy. Yeah. Unlike uh, Fair Isle, where the back can look like a little bit of a train wreck. So, yeah, and Patty says in the reverse can also be pretty. I mean, it doesn't, it's, yeah, it's just it's tidy. It's very tidy, which I like. So, and I love this mix of the, of the, um, you know, the, the simple stitch pattern, the more simple stitch pattern mixed together with the, with the mosaic. Yeah. Kate says she really likes the scarf. I do too. Tell us about this design. Well, it is again in the blue sky alpacas extra, which is a bulky weight. It's alpaca. And I think it might be a blend of something else too. Um, and this one, uh, there are two mosaics. Uh, one is that black and white that you see. It's not really white. It's a gray. And then you can see tucked inside there, uh, we're looking on the right, is a, a lighter color with a gray uh, slip stitch mosaic. But then on the other side, I decided not to do a mosaic at all, and it's just a simple, light, like an eyelet lace. And it's uh, if you unloop it, it would hang all the way probably to her fingertips. So it's pretty substantial, and you could wear it in a multitude of ways. Yeah, really pretty. And yeah, Roxy says this is wonderful as a cowl or a scarf. Very, yeah, very you. pretty. And uh, I'm thinking Roxy's going to knit this for me. And black and white is great for me. Roxy, I like that. So <laughs> just in case. But this looks so squishy, the alpaca. It just looks so squishy and like it would it would feel so good up around your neck. So um, yeah, just very pretty. So, um, and you know, we were talking about socks, you know, I, when I knit socks, which I don't do very often cause I don't wear them. Oh, and Deb says she thinks her 20 year old daughter would love that scarf. I'm turning 60 Deb and I would love that scarf. I can't imagine anybody wouldn't love that. But, um, when I do knit socks and generally as gifts and only with a gun to my head, um, is I knit from the, uh, toe up. And so one of the problems is that a lot of the um, patterns and stitch patterns, of course, um, they will work for me unless the pattern was, if it's out of a pattern, like a stitch dictionary, because they're almost always worked from the bottom up. But if it's a toe up, if it's a, if I find a pattern for a cuff down sock and I really like the stitch pattern, um, yeah. Not so good, except now I have now I have really cool patterns that I can stitch in either direction. So in the book, though, you actually include like a basic pattern for top down and two up socks, right? Yep, I do. And the, this one right here that you're looking at, these two greens, uh, is kind of an interesting story. I selected these because, or this this kind of fern looking lace, because they're actually two different stitch patterns. What happened is I really loved the, the pattern, the way it looked, and then when I tried to convert it to being top down, it wouldn't budge. I could not get it to work, so I ended up making up my own stitch pattern that will look almost just like it. So these aren't exactly alike, but when you look at it, the eyeball, your eyeballs say it's the same. So this is one instance where I had to not just convert the original stitch pattern, but actually come up with something that would work in the opposite direction, but still look almost exactly the same. So this is actually kind of fun. This was a big challenge for me because I'm not a stitch pattern designer by any means. I'm just better at taking what's there and, you know, working it in all the different directions. But this, this actually worked out and it is knit both directions. And in this book, you have basic directions for working Top down and uh, bottom up socks, and it includes it includes um, the heels too. So you you'll have the full instructions. Yeah, and when I first looked at these, I thought it was the same design. It's so. well, it's it's just I just figured it out on how, you know it's if you look they're written out different, they're charted differently, but they come out to looking very 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 closely the same. Oh, nice. And then you also have caps in two directions which is another garment that, you know, it's like a personal preference thing like socks. You know, some people like to start at the crown. I usually start at the brim. I like to decrease rather than increase. It's just me, maybe because I'm lazy. But um, but you do the uh, basic patterns for caps in two directions as well, and then you can uh, uh, apply 
stitch patterns out of the book and you have them going either way, which is kind of you cover cover all the bases. And Kate M thinks you are so smart, which I agree. So, um, but you have basic um, cat patterns also in the book, right? Yep. And, you know, there are benefits to each. You heard me talk about the cable cap, that pink cap where I worked it bottom up because I needed to, I needed to have time to get to know this the cable pattern before I figure out how to decrease in that cable pattern. But for me personally, I typically knit caps from the top down and the only reason is is I never I never could figure out when to start decreasing for the brim. I thought it made more sense to increase to my goal circumference and then work to the length that I like. So it's just maybe how my brain is wired versus how other people's brain our brains are wired. So that's why it's so important for me to provide two different directions so that because everybody thinks differently and everybody works differently and this way it kind of appeals to a, a broader group of people. Yeah, and I always like to start with my biggest row and then oh. work to the smallest. <laughs> it's <laughs> like the horse going home. Don't the horses yeah, go home faster? It gets going smaller home. and smaller. It's like, oh, this will go really <laughs> fast as opposed to it gets bigger and bigger and it's like, oh my God, I'm never going to get there. It's <laughs> you know, I like to get I like to get the worst part of the work over first. You know, and see then, that's how we're wired. Everybody thinks yeah. differently, and I, I, I could totally embrace that. And that's yeah. why and just I, speed I really to like the finish it. line, which is great. And then you also do this for shawls, which I'm one of those people. If I'm going to do a shawl, you do it the other way. The if the down. top of the shawl <laughs> is 787 yeah. stitches. And of course, the bottom of the shawl is two. I'm going to start with the 787 stitches and just. I'm the opposite. <laughs> right? So, I like to build. I do. And then it gets faster and faster and faster. And, you know, that's how I like it. And I know so many people will start with that single stitch and up yeah, they go. That's, which that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. And you do create a lot of real estate up front, but then it just gets slower and slower and slower. And, <laughs> It's it's and then I end up deciding. Oh, I don't think but this shawl needs to be. Know, that, it doesn't need to be thing, that deep. <laughs> no, that's the thing is that you end up like making deals with yourself. So if you start with the small end, and you yes, you do. It does grow. It takes longer for each row. But what happens if it's too short? You look like you're wearing a little tiny kerchief. <laughs> this yeah. way, you can really get the right length. Yeah, but the see, deal I make we think differently. My, yeah, the deal I make with myself is, oh, I, I really think that's deep enough. I can stop now. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, in terms of if I start from the little end, you know, it, then it ends up being a kerchief because I, I'm done. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm just a little lazy that way. So you have the basic designs for triangular shawls with both directions as well. And there are pictures in the book as well as instructions for the ones that are presented. So it's more than just a kind of a description. There's actual patterns in the book. Yeah. So there you have it. And then this is this is one of my favorite things. And it, you just, it, this should be required in every stitch dictionary ever, which is the stitch multiple index where you know let's say if you're doing a sock and how much room you have and how many stitches you want that will fit within your space or if you know how big you know your hat is going to be 60 six stitches and so you want six stitch repeats it's yeah and susan leibovitz says yes with an exclamation yeah. point um it's that you you don't have to thumb through the book looking for the repeats to figure out what will fit. And then, you know, either dog earing those pages or putting sticky notes all through them, which is what I end up doing, is you actually have a list of what fits within those stitches. So thank you for saving us hours of wasted time. <laughs> As we go, not that we wouldn't enjoy going through the book, but you know, when you're ready to start, you are ready to start. You want, so, you want your, yeah, you want your list of stitches that might work and then go for it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So thank you so much for in, including this in the book. And I really, and you know, you, you frequently see this in um, like Fair Isle stitch books. Right. It's, yes. Right. But you almost never 
and actually I'm trying to remember and I have I have the Harmony Guides, I have the Vogue knitting books, I have the Barbara Walker books. I you know what? I don't think I've ever seen this in any of them. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's really it's a huge time saver. So you can go right to what it is you need, which is wonderful. So what a beautiful book. I mean, not just useful, like in crazy useful, but also really beautiful, beautifully shot. And I'm just, I'm really thankful that the time and effort went into making this enjoyable for browsing as well. So, and that you really, you took the time to design some beautiful, beautiful projects as well. Um, the projects in the book are, um, you know, clearly not throwaways and they're just really pretty. So thank you so much, Wendy. They're just, it's a beautiful book. Well, thank you. And, um, I think you said it's, what is it? Number, number 10 in uh, craft books on Amazon right now. Well, this morning, last time I checked and it just came out yesterday. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, even if it comes to number 10, I'd be happy. Uh, because there's so many books, especially knitting books available to us. Um, but um, I, yeah, I'm really excited. It, it seems to be off to a good start. Yeah, great. Roxy says that she loves it's more than a stitch dictionary and has patterns too. And Kate says she agrees. It's a beautiful book. And Susan says it's timeless, which I, I agree. Oh. It's, a, it's, it's one of those books that will be on uh, knitters' shelves forever. And you're going to be like the next Barbara Walker. I don't know about that. But one thing I do want to point out that we didn't talk about, and I know that the people listening are going to think that this is fabulous, but it is wire, it's um, ring bound, wire bound, or whatever you call it. So when you look at it, it lays flat. Yeah. It does it. You don't have to smush it down. Yeah. So and there you, know, you go. And because what I find yes. that I do in the books, the stitch dictionaries that are really that are just um, regular glue bound is I end up having to photocopy that page out so that I have something flat to refer to. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the ring bound is great. And yeah, Deb says she loves that too. And she, and Kate says all um, books, I think all reference books should be that way. Cause it's otherwise you, you have to copy it. There's, or you have to break the spine, which nobody wants to do that to a book. Cause or that's just mean. In. It's me yeah, take it to break the spine. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I know people are going to want to keep up with what you're up to because that's how they're going to know first. Unless, of course, you know, I think we usually get a heads up from the publisher when something new is coming out, usually like six months in advance, so that we get an opportunity to book the authors. So if people keep checking the live events page at Planet Pearl, you'll see things that are coming out. Actually, we're getting ready to put things up that our authors are coming in October and November. So you can see what's coming out and you can plan accordingly because we got, you know, of course, that's the big season for knitting books in the fall like that. So, um, so but I know you're going to want to keep track of Wendy on her knit and tonic.net website, um, which, my gosh, Wendy, this is like 2005, so you're like an old timer now in the industry. You've been around 11 years, right? And I think in yeah. a, I think in in knitting years, that's that's got to be what, like 44 <laughs> or something in knitting years. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so you can follow Wendy here and um, see what she's up to. Also, for those who are on Ravelry, uh, Wendy has a designer page, which is oddly her name. Um, so you can also, you can uh, see the patterns that are in the books. And then, oh, and I just got my new knit scene uh, electronically. And I saw this design with the drop stitch in the sweater, which is so very cool and modern. But you can see, um, what uh, Wendy's been up to. And then also you can follow Wendy on, um, on uh, Twitter and 
and God bless you for not also being everywhere. Um, like I don't have to show 45 uh, places that you are. Wendy, yeah. um, Patty wants to know if you have a newsletter. You know, I never did a newsletter. I never really have thought about it because these books that I've been writing now, I'm, I just finished my fifth book, they take up so much time. And uh, the thought of just embarking on a newsletter has just been sort of daunting. I haven't ruled it out yet. Um, maybe I should um, take some, uh, take a poll and see what newsletters are really good to st see what people do, you know, and, and see if it's something that's doable for me. I certainly have enough uh, stuff to talk about. Yeah, you, I, I think you have plenty to talk about. I think a newsletter is just, I mean, newsletter is a commitment. That's and I think great. if people follow you on, um, on Twitter, they, it's probably going to be pretty easy to track you. And I think um, you, don't have, you don't have a news feed on your website, and that might be the easiest way for people to track you. I never even thought, you know what, I've been one of these people who um, I kind of quietly came in and started doing the blog, and then next thing I knew I was writing a book, and <laughs> I've never been a big self-promoter. Uh, like a lot of the designers out there are a lot better at it than I am. And, you know, that's something that I should look into. I've just sort of been real casual about all this stuff and just sort of just, you know, plug along working the books and doing this and doing that. And um, that's just what I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put a put a follow me news feed on your knit and tonic and we're good. Just so, so we know just, when something new gets posted. I think that's... I wonder how to do that. I have to look it up on iPad, right? I'm writing yeah. it down, people. Yeah, absolutely. And then people can subscribe, and they'll know when something new gets posted. So, okay. and Patty, and that'll fix your staying, staying up to date thing. RSS feed. Somebody says RSS feeds work, so I'll write that down, too. Okay. So there Thanks you have it. So yeah. it's, it's been an all around good day today. So, you know, I'm going to give away a copy in just a minute to um, that people who are in the room are eligible for. And then we'll be giving away a second copy on Facebook later this week. Actually, I think starts tomorrow. Um, and but if you don't, if you don't win today or if you don't win on Facebook or you just have to have it like right away. God bless Amazon Prime is all I can say. First, you mm -hmm. want to check with your local yarn store because you can get it right away. And if you your yarn store doesn't have it, first the first question is why the heck not? And then, um, but you can always come over to Planet Pearl and click on our book link, books right here, and then uh, you'll see the all around and uh, knitting stitch dictionaries right here. Actually, that's knitting all around. I need to fix that. And um, if you click right there, you can see there will be a link to purchase it through our Amazon um, shop, which gives us a very small commission, but it does help pay for things like go to meeting, which brings us um, events like today. And if you haven't won, then what you want to do too is go over to Planet Pearl starting tomorrow and the Facebook page, and it you will have an opportunity to win there as well. So people in the room, stick around because we're going to give away a book. And Wendy, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for doing this book and saving us hours of tearing our hair out <laughs> by whatever our original colored roots might be. <laughs> and um, and it's really um, – it just it's always it's always a pleasure to talk to you and I know this book is going to be just crazy crazy successful so I I along with the rest of uh, knitters everywhere will be very much looking forward to volume three for your sequel and uh of all the really fancy difficult oh my god I can't believe she translated those stitches <laughs> <laughs> Well, fingers crossed, and thank you very much for having me, Beth, and thank you to all the people who are listening as well. I mean, if it weren't for the you guys, I wouldn't be here to write the book. So it's, like, really exciting all around, and hopefully there will be another book. So fingers crossed, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Great. Everyone stick around. I'm about to give away a book. <laughs>